This is the first video in applications of generative AI for the fall 2025 semester at Washington University. So in this course, we are going to take a look at generative AI and we're going to see how to use it in a variety of contexts. We're going to make use of the OpenAI API to do a lot of this. We will see also how you can run it locally on your own computer as well as you can also adapt this code relatively easily thanks to Langchain to other things, like maybe you want to go with AWS Bedrock or Google. So topics that we cover here, we'll get into prompt-based development. It is not cheating to use generative AI in a generative AI course to help you write your code. You're encouraged to use ChatGPT, or I'll show you how you can use the playground that you get access to with your OpenAI API key. It is one of the material requirements of this course that you obtain access to OpenAI. We estimate at the university that this is about a $100 USD lab cost. However, I have found students don't spend anywhere near that uh, to make it completely through, through the course. But we, we say $100 just to give you kind of a cap. If you find yourself running dangerously close to that um, or spending a lot more than you're expecting, definitely uh, let me know because I, there's probably something we can figure out there. We'll do the introduction to large language models, uh, text generation, text summarization, all the usual sort of overused sort of tasks that these are able to do. But we'll, we'll see how they all work. We'll look at chat memory and how it can remember your conversation and refer back to it. We'll see data extraction. This is a very common use for this sort of a model. You're able to extract data. Like we'll use this to piece apart insurance applications. I work at a company called RGA. We're a Fortune 200 reinsurance company, a financial company basically. We'll look at Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. RAG is the ability to take large documents, chunk it up, and then the Gen AI is going to grab just what it needs. Agents are huge and taking the world by storm. So we'll, we'll look at agent programming and how to really create programs that can perform a bunch of steps for you. You'll be using something in this course, an auto grader, where you'll submit your programs and it'll check it and, and, and give you updates. That's actually an agent that I programmed myself. So that's, we'll, we'll talk more about that as we, as we go through. There will be a Kaggle assignment. Kaggle is kind of the Super Bowl of data science. And you will, we'll see that you're, we'll have all of you try to produce models both Gen AI and traditional to see who can get the closest, uh, the the closest fit to that. We will look at multimodal text to image. We'll see that you can generate images from this. You can generate. We'll show you how to create cartoons and those kind of things. Introduction to uh, Streamlit. This is how you can create interactive web applications. I'll show you fine tuning. Uh, how you can fine tune the model to what you're you're wanting to do. Prompt engineering, very, very important topic. And then speech processing, how you can generate speech from this. You can even generate music now with generative AI. I mean, here, here's a sample song that I created just about my bulldog hickory. I haven't created a video to go along with it with Gen AI yet, but that's that's probably coming next. Brown and white, strug and tall, country dog with a nose for it all. Dreaming about squirrels and a hamburger wish. Snoring so Gen AI really has been kind of going at the speed of light. You see this, you see this slide that I have here. These are some of the AI definitions. So artificial intelligence kind of includes everything. And then you've got generative AI and predictive AI, those two bubbles that we sort of divide the world into. Predictive AI really makes use of traditional machine learning, deep learning, and really even generative AI to to a degree for, for pre-processing. But predictive AI, this is really what I break the original sort of data science into, where you're you have a number of columns and you're predicting another column. Generative AI, which is built upon deep learning, which is built upon machine learning, is where you're always predicting the next word or you're just generating entirely new data from the input. 
And of course, generative AI is the purpose of this course. Just to show you the amazing speed, I really do think that generative AI is here to change the world. There's always been, I, I see people who will just um, see some of the dumb things that, that Gen AI does and think, well, there's nothing to see here. This is just a fad. Definitely not the case. I mean, when the automobile first came out and completely displaced the horse, I found these two articles here where people were referring to the auto as maybe a fad or they were talking about just a lot of shortcomings in those early automobiles. They had very weak batteries, other concerns like that. Obviously, the automobile took the world by storm. This is my Halloween costume from 2023, and this just shows you how fast this is moving. This was not that long ago. You'll notice I don't have the right number of fingers. This is not a generated AI picture at all. That is actually me. I bought some kind of, yeah, I don't know, costume jewelry to, to put extra fingers on myself. So for Halloween, my costume was I was a computer-generated human. Then one of the next things that they were talking about that AI just couldn't figure out was it could not fill a glass of wine completely full, mainly because it didn't have training data of completely full glasses. They figured out how to get it to abstract. You can see that it does generate a full glass of wine now. This was a big thing, though, just, just really six months ago. It still can't really generate a analog clock that has the right time on it. If you're, if you're specifying like the prompt there where I'm saying 1045. And then other things where it'll completely break down is I, if I had it generate just like you'd find in a kindergarten classroom or something where you're teaching children ABCs, I told it to give me all the letters and some sort of picture to go with each. You'll see it completely skips B, skips lots of other letters, and then I don't know why it's got car down there by X, and then uh, the X has a star. So the reason that it falls apart on this one is fairly interesting, really. Gen AI does not deal in terms of letters. That's why how many R's in strawberry is something that it's frequently made fun of about. But it's not thinking in letters. It's thinking in tokens, and tokens are parts of words. So telling it to do something across all the ABCs when it's, it's thinking in tokens is difficult. It's also difficult because you're having it do a fairly large iteration. You're iterating over 26 of these. If you had it build each of these one by one by one and then stitch them together, this would work much better. But on a single prompt, this doesn't work that well. So for this course, you'll notice I have all of these notebooks. And these notebooks will, if you, if you go to them, you'll find links to all of the videos. And you can also link between them. So if you find this useful, definitely, as they say, smash the like button and subscribe. Then you'll get to see the rest of the videos for these courses as I make them. And just the various AI projects that I like to take on and then do videos about. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again.